Hello again, and welcome to video number six in the Financing Capital Budgeting and Investments sequence. Uh, and today we will be talking in this video, rather we will be talking about margin purchases. It's already evening outside, but hopefully my lighting isn't too bad. We have mentioned when we discussed Efficient Frontier that it is possible to invest more than 100% of your wealth into an asset. How do you do that? How do you do that? You buy on margin. Most of us, uh, well, some of us at least, have mortgages. So when you buy property using a mortgage, what you are in fact becoming, you are becoming a leveraged investor. Now, even if you are an owner occupier and don't really treat your property as an investment property, nevertheless, you have purchased your property on margin, which means that you have not paid 100% of the purchase price in cash. Unfortunately, very few of us are in a position to do that. And the returns that you may have realized or will realize on that purchase will be amplified. Leverage, margin purchasing makes good things better, makes bad things worse. So how does that work? And let me use some really, really simple numbers. Let's say that I want to buy stock XYZ. And let's say that the price is 100 bucks per share. And um, my initial margin requirement, IMR, standing for initial margin requirement, is 50%. In property market, we refer to it as a deposit requirement. Uh, how much money do I have to pay upfront for this purchase? And let's say that margin loan interest is 5%. Again, probably not um, a terribly realistic number in this market, but um, just to keep things simple for expositional purposes. Now, let's say that in a year, price goes up to 120. Okay. So, had you been a cash buyer, your return on this purchase would have been 20%. But in case of a margin purchase, your return will be amplified. So it will be value at the end, 120 minus value at the beginning, 100. Now, I also have to compute the margin loan interest. I have borrowed 50 bucks here, 50% 50 of my uh, purchase price. And 5% of 50 bucks is two and a half dollars. Now, what do I put in the denominator? In the denominator, I put the amount that I have invested, and that is not a hundred bucks. That's fifty dollars. So we have one twenty minus hundred minus uh, two and a half, which is seventeen point five divided by fifty. Thirty-five percent. Even though my returns should have doubled because I am investing only half of a hundred, they will not because of the margin interest. Okay, so they have almost doubled, went from 20% for a cash purchase to 35%. Well, of course, you see the problem. Let's say that if price drops 
to ninety dollars. A cash buyer would have realized a ten percent loss, but things here are worse than that. A lot worse than that, as a matter of fact. I have turned on some additional light. Hopefully that will make a difference. So my return. Ninety minus one hundred minus two and a half divided by fifty. So that will be minus twelve and a half divided by fifty. Minus. 25%. So actually, again, because of uh, margin interest, my return was actually, actually worse than twice the loss of a cash buyer. So I hope this makes sense. Now, who is lending you this money? Your broker does. In case of a house, it's most of the time it's a bank. And what does bank hold as a collateral? They hold your house, right? So technically speaking, I don't actually own my house, West Bank does. If I default on my mortgage loan, then, um, well, they, and if I really screw things up, they can foreclose on, the, on my home. Now, what is happening here? Here, the broker gives you uh, the loan. And what does the broker hold as a collateral, they hold your stock. So yeah, you technically speaking become an owner of the stock, but brokerage will hold your securities in street name and use them as a collateral for your loan. And here we introduce a concept of maintenance margin requirement for MMR. MMR will always be lower than the initial margin requirement. And here we assume, just again for the sake of simplicity, that it's going to be 30%. Oh, and by the way, before I move forward, here in my um, little example, margin requirement was 50%, which means that roughly speaking, if you ignore margin interest, your returns are doubled on both good side and bad side. Think of deposit requirements in the real estate market in New Zealand, which are most often set at 20%. That means that you are leveraged out five to one. Any return is amplified by a factor of five. In some currency trading, the margin requirement is 1%. 1% of purchase price you actually have to put up as cash, which means that your returns are amplified 100 to one. A movement in the fourth decimal place of an exchange rate can wipe you out. M margin is dangerous. Leverage, high leverage is dangerous. And we know from financial history that one of the contributing factors to the global financial crisis back in 2008 was the fact that large complex financial institutions were highly leveraged entities. Okay? And um, even a fairly moderate change in returns could wipe them out and did. So I am a broker and I hold your shares as a collateral. The problem is that the value of the shares changes every day, about every, every minute, as a matter of fact. And if the value of the shares goes up, that's fine. I have absolutely no problem with that. But if the value of the shares goes down, that's when I'm starting to be nervous. Because at some point, the value of the shares will go down to a point where I might sustain um, a loss. In case of housing market, I believe in New Zealand, the term is underwater mortgage. When you actually have negative equity, when the value of your home is actually lower than the value of the mortgage. In most cases, the bank actually will not care too much as long as you keep making your repayments. Um, but here, things are a little bit different. 
And uh, when, if rather, if the price of the share drops to a point at which the bank is no longer comfortable, they will issue what is called a margin call. So how do we compute the margin call price? It's the loan divided by one minus MMR. Oops. Which in our case, $50 is the loan. One minus 0 0.3. Or 50 divided by 0 0.7. Can let me use my calculator quickly. $71.43. If the value of this share drops from 100 to $71.43, the broker will no longer feel comfortable holding your shares as a collateral for that loan and will issue a margin call, either selling off your shares or requesting you to deposit cash into your account, thus restoring the initial margin requirement of 50%. By the way, the fact that the brokerage holds your uh, shares in street name will contribute nicely to my next video, which will be about short sales. A short sale is a very curious transaction in financial markets when you sell something that doesn't actually belong to you. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in my next video.